Hello everybody, good morning. Welcome back to Let's Play Armageddon Empires. I'm not sleeping well, and I figured it'd be good mental exercise to create a new deck with you guys and show you how this is done in this game. It also occurred to me that in the last few episodes of the Machine Empires, I wasn't really explaining how the combat was going on, while I was making the decisions I was making, and how fate worked. So we'll go over that a little bit later. First, however, we'll create a deck. So, as you might recall, there are four different factions you can pick. They all have very slight differences in how the decks play, because some have require more action points to do certain things versus others, which might have a greater amount of units they can use in a non-hero-led squad. And some units have different type are lacking certain types of units that the other units have. That said, we're gonna make an Empire of Man deck. Because they are probably gonna be the easiest to explain. So without further ado, let's go ahead and create one. This is the your deck creation window. And we're gonna step through this. So as I believe I mentioned before, when you create a deck you'll be choosing a maximum point allowance for your deck and a maximum point allowance for your tiles. A deck consists of, I suppose, both cards and tiles. Cards are all your heroes, infrastructure, and units, as well as air support you'll have in your deck. This is, for the most part, what you'll be using throughout the entire game. It's kind of randomized, as you've seen when we play, but the idea that you've used to create your deck will hopefully hold you through to the end. Tiles are used when you first begin a new game. This is going to provide you with your initial setup, your what resources might be around you, what land or defensive tiles you have taken, as well as your starting resource tile. Since the idea will probably be easiest for me to explain starting with tiles rather than cards, we'll go over tiles first. So. The maximum amounts you're allowed to have for cards and tiles, cards being 175, 225, and 275, and tiles are 5, 10, and 15. So what does that mean? Well, here's a tile over here. Oh, and the way this works is that you can see the name of the deck I'm working on up here, a picture of the tile that I'm currently examining here, and its statistics on this side. These are all the groupings of all the different types of tiles, with these being obviously core resource tiles. These ones secondary, etc, etc. So let's look over each of these core resource tiles and give you an example of how these will work. So as we can see, we have a staging area here, this is the name. We have zero of one in our deck. We can only have one staging area maximum. And we can see that it's got a point cost of five, it produces one of each resource each turn, and we have a little bit of lore in here. We can see it has a movement cost of 1 to enter the tile as well, and offers no defensive bonus for any units inside of it. Basically, if you're going to make a human deck and you wanted 5 points of tiles as your maximum, this would be what you pick. That said, this deck, let's try making it a 10 point tile deck. It would give us some more uh, room to add a few more other things to this. But before we pick it, this one, Let's look at some of the other tiles we have. So first off, as you can see again, this produces one of each type of resource. One human, one materials, one tech, one energy. Interesting enough, these are coded a little different, color coded a little differently up there. This, these are produced but not collected. You have to have some sort of resource collector here. This deck work, this tile works really well with the Imperial Palace stronghold card, which we'll get to in a little bit. That said, there are lots of other choices, as you can see here, for core resource tiles. We don't even have to have a core resource tile, I think, when we make a deck, but we definitely want one. They're very useful. I'll go over, uh, and well, we'll take a few seconds to look at each of these here. Here we can see a different type of resource tile, the abandoned factories. Notice, though, that it's lacking any sort of human resource. We have two materials, one tech and one energy. This is really good, but unfortunately for the humans, you don't really want to use this as your sole resource tile. 
that would be a huge massive mistake because almost all the human cards especially the ones that can make resource collectors require a human resource to deploy if you put in the abandoned factories as your single uh, core resource style your deck is effectively can't be played let's look at some of the other ones really quick here's the ruins the ruins is seven points compared to the staging areas five and also produces one of each resource but it has a movement cost of three this is kind of really important because this is more or less guaranteeing that your starting town here is going to be outside of the supply range for enemies to attack it unfortunately the enemies will see the city and realize that there might be something here it's also got a defense bonus of two which is very useful it'll add two defense dice to all the fending to all units within there pretty good here we have a crater base also seven points this is basically the ruins or staging area but offers an additional point of resources it also has a movement cost of two which helps secure this space from just any wandering enemy and a defense bonus of one which is decent the abandoned base offers it another human resource very important for the humans at movement cost one of defense point zero though there's not a whole lot of defensive um for incentive to take this one still if you're looking for resources this is pretty good the big dig at nine points this is as you can see amongst the more expensive ones this looks a lot like the crater base only it adds another two defense bonus because of tunnels so four defense bonus night uh, for us right here at the big dig very nice city state 51 three human resources that is awesome with a defense bonus of one and two movement cost and vault 13 10 points Whew, this is expensive it also gives you a little bit more energy which is good at three movement and three defensive bonus this mountain is will be difficult to actually get through and tunnels really helps out as well this basically means that when the computer finds this base if I have defensive units in here they're gonna lay siege to it for several turns rather than risk attacking me with my massive amount of defense bonus here that said though let's go ahead and add let's add our crater base next I think we'll add another resource tile but let's take a look at the secondary resource tile so we've taken a look at the core ones let's take a look at what these ones are so as we can see shanty towns looks like a normal tile only also produces one human pretty neat and it costs two points these ones produce one material at two the priest the debris fields are one tech for two the solar park is one energy for two so basically these are guaranteed ways to get a single point of resources around here then we have junkyards small town and destroyed factories and all of these are adding additional uh, one additional type of resource you can mix and match as you like I think we'll make this we'll make this a 10 point deck in which case where's my tech let's add a debris field to this so we had a base here with this that was destroyed and some other bits of it were f flung somewhere next to it. Next we have minefield tiles. The only difference between these are the types of terrain that are on them. Again, the computer will see these as well. I believe the minefields here are the type of mines that humans can deploy. So these are Imperial Minefields 10. I'm going to take a quick peek and see what that, what those do. I think this is what they do. So they'll be Camouflage 5 and Anti-Personnel. means that they'll do a lot of damage to, well, any unarmored target. So that'd be basically all the mutants, I think. A great deal of the Cthulhu creatures and almost no not very effective against the machines so minefield tiled ones uh, minefield tiles ones minefield tiles one consists of one movement 
tiles. Minefield tile tiles two are three movement tiles, and minefield tiles three are four movement. The normal terrain tiles also have those requirements. Because we're one point less than ten, and because minefields cost us two points, we're going to go ahead and pick a normal terrain tile. And I think we'll take a rock desert. Okay, those are our tiles. As you can see, we have three tiles for a total of ten points. Let's save this deck. We're going to save over this deck that I was trying to make before. As you can see, a total of zero cards are in it. All right. So with that done, we've now kind of explained how tiles work and the idea of what a maximum point allowance is. If you've played any type of living card game or collectible card game or deck building game like Magic the Gathering, L5R, or Game of Thrones, I think, or the Star Wars, and there's tons of other collectible card games, and what not, or Dominion. You're feel oh no, no, not Dominion. Dominion doesn't have any points. But anyway, you can see what it's like. With, it comes to point costs and selecting different tiles and cards and so on. So with this done, let's take a look at some of the cards here. Although I guess I should explain a little more about how to create a good deck. When it comes to deck creation, you want to have a theme and you need to slim your deck down so that it's very effective. You don't want to bloat your deck with hundreds of cards because every different type of card you put into your deck lowers your chances of getting what you need. For example, if you put two of every type of card in here, you can't realistically expect to get a particular card when you need it. So you want to have a focus for your deck. In this case, because my tiles have a little bit of extra tech and a little bit of extra materials, but not a guaranteed extra human or energy, we're going to be building a lot of tanks with this deck. And, or, I suppose I could take some Imperial Infantry or Powered Battle Armor, but realistically, tanks are probably what I should focus